Uh, welcome to the Kelvin Dean Show. It's been a while since I did a podcast, guys, but I'm going to start. I'm going to start, and this is my first show this season, podcast, and uh, I just wanted to go over last week. Ah, oh, rough one for the Jets. Rough one. I just I feel so sorry for my brother and Brian Watson and all the other Jet fans out there with Mr. Aaron Rodgers going down after four plays. Just so sad for Aaron and so sad for the New York Jets. I mean, they did come out with a win uh, thanks to Josh Allen. I'll get into Josh Allen in a second. But, you know, it's just, man, I mean, everyone thought, hey, this is the, this is the, this is going to be our season. You know, they get Dalvin Cook, they free up, what, 35,000, or excuse me, $35 million. (laughs) The owners wish it was 35,000, right? Uh, They free up anywhere between 25, I believe, to 35 million in cap space to get Dalvin Cook for the year. And they just said, hey, man, we get Dalvin Cook. We don't know how Brees um, Hall's going to do, Bryce Hall, excuse me. And um, we didn't know. They, they just didn't know. Uh, and it's just, it's just so sad that it happened. And now the Players Union filed yesterday uh, about, you know, all stadiums should have grass. Uh, they're thinking that MetLife Stadium, that is a bad stadium. If you really think about it, think about it. All the people who've torn ACLs in that stadium, right? You have Odell Beckham, right? right? And then Shepard, right? I mean, all the all the different... Saquon Barkley, right? Now, unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers for the Jets. I just, wow. Uh, it's just, it's just sad in a way. Sad in a way. That's, uh, you know, I, I, I really give it up to the Jet fans because they're, you know, diehards. You know, and uh, just, just sad, sad. And you know, I mean, they did get the win. Exciting, exciting at the end. Uh, I believe the refs missed a, a tripping call from the uh, Buffalo Bills uh, got tripped at the end. But you know, it's, it's a it's one of those calls that should have been called yeah, because it was right in front of a Lions judge and he should have called it. But I don't know. Anyway, but congratulations to the Jets, that's for sure. I'm so happy for you guys winning. <laughs> and uh, it's just, um, let's just go over some stuff, man. I mean, how about my YouTube show? I picked the Upset Special Last week, I picked the Cleveland Browns to beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Some people had that, and the, but a lot of it's a funny part. My my lock of the week. Now, when I give out a lock of the week, you have to understand something. It's one of those locks that I know for certainty that team's going to win. I I'm virtually I think I've lost one lock out of all these seasons. I've been calling games. Uh, I think I've lost like maybe one lock. That's it. I mean, usually I'm like 99% sure of of the teams, you know, my lock. And if I give out a lock, guys, I mean, seriously, do not bet against it. Do not bet against it. And my lock was, and my lock was, excuse me, phone call. <laughs> uh it was the San Francisco 49ers to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? Now, I sat there and I was listening to the pregame and I have all these analysts. And they're like, oh yeah, Steelers, they're going to win this game. Their they're, they're defense is, they're gonna, yeah, they have, uh, you know, the great defense and they're going to get to Purdy and, and, Pick, and Pickens. He's, he's you know, looking amazing and... Um, you know, in preseason, they were undefeated and they, they were so good and yada, 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 right? But guys, I mean, it's not preseason, you know, and, you know, you're playing the number one defense of last year 
you're paying all the number ones, you know. You're not playing a team like, you know, preseason usually. They did play a couple um, number one offenses, but uh, those number one offenses, as few guys were were out. The key proponents of that those defenses were out. So uh, I... I just knew it. I, I knew uh, Brock Purdy. I'm I'm calling Brock Purdy to be the next Montana. I mean, he is just so cool and collective. The way he moves around in the pocket, the love of the game that he has is just amazing. The you know Bosa, they signed Bosa right before the first game, and man, what a huge! I mean, the guy was literally he's like a rocket ship. You know, I mean, the guy just, wow. I was just so amazed, so amazed that he just, you know, dominated, dominated. And the defensive line dominated. And, you know, Mr. Pickens didn't know what to do, you know. And he had a bad game. Well, you know, that's the thing, the, the bad game thing. Like Josh Allen having a bad game, right? People don't understand is that these teams, including Buffalo Bills, they have defensive minded coaches, right? And their offensive line is suspect. You know, and they just haven't really thought about it. And I just I I scratch my head and I'm wondering, Buffalo Bills, what's going on? Your defense is great. You know, they fly around and Really, really good, but your offensive line. I mean, Josh Allen, you know why he's running around like Superman and jumping over tall buildings with a single bound? Well, because his offensive line isn't that good. It's like the bottom of the barrel when it comes to offensive lines. I mean, mean the bottom of the stats sheets is just horrendous. You know, so Josh Allen's always, defender's always in his face. He's always running with his legs, getting out of, you know, the, you know, the clutches of the defensive linemen and the linebackers, you know, and the safeties, blitzes. I mean, it's just, wow. Wow, guys. I just, I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Uh, I, you know, it's not Josh Allen, guys. It just isn't just Josh Allen. It's that offensive line. And I just under, don't understand where McDermott is just scratching his head thinking, oh, geez, what's going on? You know, it's the same thing with defenses and stuff. Um, you think about it. Look at the Miami Dolphins, right, with this Los Angeles Chargers. You have a Bosa on your side, but you have a coach that's an offensive coach and um the uh, you know they bring in uh, the young blood from Dallas you know uh, the offensive coordinator and um, you know they're running with that clear Eckler look awesome but the thing of it is is that they have Joe they have a Bosa guys a Bosa on the edge and what happened I mean there was no sacks against Tua do you understand is that Tua against the Los Angeles Chargers, he just dominates. I mean, he almost almost threw for 500 yards, guys. I mean, he has the fastest, you know, cheetah, the fastest wide receiver in the game. And of course, but man, if you looked at the at the, you know number of throws, the majority of their throws was in the middle of the field. I, what's going on with the the coordinator? What is going on with the, the Los Angeles Chargers coordinator? Think about that, guys. What's going on with that coordinator? And it's the same thing with the Buffalo Bills offensive line coach. What's going on? You know why is? Josh Allen running around. If Josh Allen said some time to throw, and they they put in maybe a, a couple more you know targets for him to throw at. I mean, they went out and got Kincaid, which is awesome. And they have Knox, and they have Gabe Davis, and they have Mister Diggs. You know, Stefan Diggs. You know, making his amazing catches. 
I really, I mean, it's just, it's, it just bugs me. Bugs me that their offensive line hasn't figured, they haven't figured it out how to run the ball effectively. You know, you need to do that. I, I don't understand it. I mean, Andy Reid had an offensive line after their loss in Tampa, the, the Super Bowl. They, his offensive line revamped the offensive line. You know, because they lost that Super Bowl, which I predicted that Tampa Bay would win. But the thing it is is that, you know, he, Andy took four months off season, four months to rebuild that offensive line. And, and it's just, he rebuilt an offensive line that brought them back into the Super Bowl and to win a Super Bowl. So, you know, you have to scratch your head and wonder what's going on with the Buffalo Bills, you know, offensive coordinator. I, I just don't understand. I, you just, something's going on there. And it's not Josh Allen's fault. It just isn't. You know, and, uh, you know, and just, it's the same thing with the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, you know. You know, their defense, with all that talent on the defense, not one sack, didn't know hurries, Tua, Tua, it was like, it was like Tua was playing with a Pop Warner football team. Pop Warner football team, you know. I mean, a, a, a defense that can't stop third down whatsoever. The Los Angeles Chargers, third down 18, ah, that's easy. They're going to get a first down, right? It just amazes, amazes me. And uh, same with the Buffalo Bills, right? Uh, It just, I hope they, you know, I I think they'll bounce back. You know, how about those Minnesota Vikings, Uh, you know, uh, losing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? And you have to figure this, Minnesota gave up five starters throughout the year. Including Dalvin Cook, guys. Dalvin Cook. You know, and and Peters and I just I I just don't understand what's going on there. You know, and now I it's just I don't get it. I don't get what they're doing. I I they look terrible against the Bucks. I mean they of course Jefferson is literally the MVP. The guy, the, you can't stop him, you know. But you know, once again, Kirk Cousins is hurried. He has to get out of the pocket. He's he's a pocket quarterback, you know. He's not a Josh Allen, you know. And uh, he was just hurried all day, you know. He, he, Kirk Cousins, mind you, is a very good quarterback. He he has. His numbers and quarterback numbers are better than Dak Prescott, believe it or not. If you look at the, they were pretty similar until last year. Dak just threw all those interceptions, but you know, just they're very similar, very similar. Uh, Kirk Cousins a little bit better, in, in numbers, you know. Uh, and how about the, the loss of Vegas Raiders, and I, which I called, I called that game. Jimmy G, Nikki's Niners, her heartthrob, Jimmy G. She's in love with him. I mean, I could go on and on what she makes her husband do to look like Jimmy G. <laughs> but that's 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 another another story for another day. <laughs> you know, um, but man, I call that game. I knew it. I knew that the uh, the Las Vegas Raiders would beat the Denver Broncos. And I know that, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, Sean Payton, but I mean, I don't think you can fix uh, Russell Wilson. I think Russell is, um, you know, he should be retiring. And I just don't think he has it in him any longer. I really don't think that. Um, that's just my opinion, right? I hope he proves me wrong. I really do. I certainly do. I hope he does. And, um, you know, it's just... There's some games, I mean, like my upset special with the Browns over the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, they're showing T. Higgins. I mean, he, he couldn't catch one ball. I, I know it was a terrible game and a terrible, uh, you know, weather and stuff like that. But, you know, it was terrible weather in the East Coast, too, you know. But, you know, Burroughs didn't look good. You know, he his calf injury, guys, he's not going to be able to plant his 
his his throwing um, foot as as firmly and get out of um, the way of tackles and guards and linebackers. Oh my, coming after him. <laughs> so I mean that was pretty an easy upset special um, for me. It was and uh, I you know Kansas City losing to Detroit. Hats off to Detroit. I mean just think. That's how big Kelsey is to that team and Chris Jones with two components. Now think about this. One hundred, the top 100 players, the top 100. Only two teams now have hit the top 100, uh, meaning the top 10 in the top 100. Yes, the top 10 in the top 100. There's only two teams that have hit three players in the top 10 in the top 100 players in the NFL. And it was the uh, the Rams the year before. And then, once again, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. They ranked Mahomes, Kelsey, and Chris Jones in the top 10. And I believe Kelsey was five... Uh, Mahomes was number one and Chris Jones was number 10. And the thing of it is, what you have to, what I'm trying to get at that is that their top two players, productive players, the top defensive player and the top, second top offensive player of that team are out. They are not playing. You know, one has an injury and one has, um, uh, they just actually just signed Chris Jones to a one year deal. Just wanted to let you know all of you uh, amazing. Chiefs fans out there, and I uh, just, which is great. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. You know, and uh, just have to realize that you know when two top components of an offense and a defense are out, most likely you're going to have a hard time winning that game. And I called. I thought the Kansas City Chiefs would pull it out. I really did. You know, I. Pfft, me and I don't know how many, uh, a thousand other analysts, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just, but, you know, I, I should have seen that. That's one game I, I think I should have seen it coming, you know. It's like the Philadelphia Eagles playing the, the uh, you know, New England Patriots. Mac Jones, in the second half, in the second half, played a better game than Jalen Hurts. Yeah, Mac Jones played a better game in the second half than Jalen Hurts. I mean, they were up 16 to nothing, and then it was 16-14, and they lost 25-20. And, I mean, Mac Jones had all the opportunity at the end to win the game. Uh, I guess Ezekiel Elliott missed a ball right near the end of the game. He couldn't haul it in for a first down, and they lost it. So it was just not him. Trust me. It was also the weather, too, that had a large part of that. I thought the New England Patriots really played well against the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, they held them to 25 points. They lost by five points. I mean, I called Philly in that game to win. But I thought the New England Patriots, and I'll tell you, guys, you are two of fans out there. Uh... They're playing the New England Patriots this month, this week. The Miami Dolphins out there. And you're fantasy football nuts, right? Be careful. Be careful. Uh, he's to his beat, Bill Belichick. But Bill has held Tua to an average of 188 yards, right, per game. Three touchdowns, two interceptions per game. So, I mean, still, he's throwing three touchdowns, but he's throwing two interceptions. That's the average. So, be careful out there, players, and with Tua this year. And I'm sure Bill's going to, he's, he's going to look at the Los Angeles Charger game. He's going to see McDaniels. Now, McDaniels, he's not a, just a great coach. He is a brilliant mind when it comes to offensive-minded. I mean, he is brilliant, guys. Brilliant. 
and you're going against a brilliant offensive mind against a brilliant defensive mind. It's going to be an exciting game. Be very careful, fantasy football players, because I'm sure they're going to box out Tyreek Hill. They're going to take away the you know, the slants in the middle. Bill Belichick, you know, and then I, John, I, McDaniel's is going to know that as well. So he, I'm sure he's going to come up with a great plan. But most likely, they're going to take that away from them. I mean, you have the uh, Miami, you have the fastest receiver in the league, and then you have like the third fastest in Waddle. So I mean, that's it's a tall order for any biz, uh, for any football team. But the way the New England Patriots played against the Philadelphia Eagles, guys, how tough it was, and it's going to be in New England, and there you could have inclement weather in New England, you know, and the thing it is, you, you know, man, you got to watch that out, watch that out, watch out for uh, New England this, this, uh, this week. I'm going to be giving my picks uh, for this week. And uh, I just wanted to uh, give them, I'll give them out now. Uh, I do have a YouTube show that's coming up uh, and I'm going to give out the picks in multicolored, you know, <laughs> So what? Let me uh, get to that. All right, all right, ready, guys. Let's do a little intro. Intro. Thank you. Philadelphia, mind you, didn't play that well. Okay, so you have the Minnesota Vikings playing the Eagles, uh, Philadelphia Eagles. I just, 0-1 Minnesota, they're going to be 0-2 at the end of this game. I'm giving this one up to the Eagles. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely the Eagles in this one. We have... Our Sunday morning games, we have the Kansas City Chiefs going into Jacksonville, mind you. Jacksonville. Now, mind you, I did talk about the Kansas City Chiefs before, right? And I did mention that there's two components that were missing in opening day, right? Well, guess what? Those two components, Mr. Travis Kelsey and Mr. Chris Jones will be playing in this game. Not too certain about Travis. It's still questionable, but I think he'll be playing in this game. Uh, and if you listen to their brother's podcast, New Heights, um, you know it sounds like he might be playing in this game. It sounds pretty, pretty, pretty certain he might be. But there's always a question. You never know about injuries. Kansas City Chiefs goes into the Jacksonville Jags. Jags looked just stellar last week. I called them to win, and they did. And, uh, you know, they, there was some, I, hey, how about Ridley? Huh? I told everyone Ridley's going to be awesome this year. And, yes, he's going to be awesome. And, man, you know, Trevor Lawrence loves him. Oof, oof. Now you got to get the other guys involved. Kirk. Um, ETN looked amazing, even big, um, you know, the, uh, big fullback they, or actually running back they, they picked up bigly. Uh, man, he looks awesome, doesn't he? Wow. And that's why they call him Tank. <laughs> I, I just don't see Kansas City losing twice in a row. I just don't see that happening here. I think the Jags, um, will give them a great game. This is going to be a close game, guys. This uh, trust me. This is going to be like a one point game. I think the Kansas City Chiefs will kick a field goal at the end and win this game. Uh, but it's going to be a tough game. This is a tough game to call. But I'm giving this one up to the Jags. We have the next game is the Jets. Uh, it's the one uh, twenty five p.m. game and the Jets going into Dallas. Wow, Zach Wilson 
against the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. Wow. I mean, their defense made, well, they played against an inept Giants offensive line, an inept team itself. So they made the Giants look like a Pop Warner team. But, I mean, the Jets is a little bit better. Jets' defense is going to hold Dak Prescott. This is going to be a very low-scoring game, guys. Very low-scoring game. I'm I'm thinking maybe 9-6, to 12-9, or it's going to be very low-scoring. Uh, and the Jets are going to keep up with them, uh, even with Dak Wilson. They're going to keep up with them. I, I think the Jets uh, will... Um, Hopefully Zach Wilson, I you know I'm sure he'll have probably a couple picks, and you know it might be uh, it might be a, um, like an eighteen to six, eighteen to nine game. I'm giving this one up to the Dallas Cowboys, that's for sure. Um, don't hate me, uh, Jet fans, my brother, and just please <laughs> don't throw stones. The next game, we have the Ravens and uh, the Bengals. Uh, Bengals looked somewhat terrible. Um, And we have uh, the Baltimore Ravens didn't look too good. They looked better in the second half. They are without Mark. They were without Mark Andrews. They did beat the Texans, which isn't really saying much. Uh, Let's just be honest. And uh, so uh, I'm giving this one up. Uh, This is my upset special, guys, for the day. Wow. Two times in a row, two weekends in a row, I've called an upset special for a team to beat the Bengals. And uh, that Bengals offensive line looked just terrible. And now you're playing the Ravens. I think think the Ravens, I really think the Ravens um, are going to win this game. Uh, That's my upset special. The Baltimore Ravens to beat the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. The next game, we have the Seattle Seahawks smarting from their loss to the Los Angeles Rams. But I'm telling you something, the Rams, I mean, preseason, I was having them just terrible, terrible. You know, I was just calling them last place. I was that, I was. I thought they'd be in last place, but no, I just, um, I, they really stepped up without Cooper Cup. That was pretty impressive. Their running game was great. Williams and, uh, you know, and the new kid, Williams. Wow, was he great, right? And Akers and uh, Van Jefferson and, and uh, Higaby and, you know, Stafford was, you know, Stafford. They won. Congrats. And, you know, Seahawks looked in disarray, you know. And they were in Seattle in Seattle well Seattle Seahawks are going into the Detroit Lions who just beat the world champions and that rush of the Lions did you see that right tackle of the Kansas City Chiefs cheating (laughs) because (laughs) Hawkins he is so good (laughs) he is so good Hawkins it's, it's so good he is good, guys. He is just so good. So, I mean, just, I just don't right, see, you uh, right. uh, I, I just don't see, um, you know, him doing anything other than uh, really playing them tight. Uh, you know, the Lions, they're going to pound it. The Seattle Seahawks are going to pound it. I think this might be, um, you know, I think Seattle will come alive a little. I think the Lions are too good. I'm giving it, this one up to the Lions. We have the next game. We have the Colts going into the Houston Texans. Texans that are at home. The Colts kind of played over their heads last week. They're playing the Texans. Two terrible teams playing each other. Uh, what an ugly game. But I'm going to give this one up to the home team. Uh, I'm giving this one up to the Texans. I guess this is a minor uh, upset. This is a one-point um, Colts are favored by one point. You know, pretty even matched team. Uh, then the next game we have the Bears going into the Bucks, going into Tampa. Ta- uh, the Chicago Bears look just terrible. I mean, they, they Justin Fields. They don't have an answer. He's running around because the offensive line is just so terrible. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. 
with the uh, Chicago Bears. I just don't get it. Um, you know, and Baker Mayfield looked great. Uh, the Bucks came to play. They're they're going to be fighting for this division. I think the Bucks are going to be fighting. I'm very impressed with the Bucks beating the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, and um, I'm giving this one up to the Tampa Bay Bucks. My cousin, uh, um, Mr. Bach in, in Florida. This is for you, brother. I know you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan. So um, love you too. And uh, we have the next game. Uh, we have the Packers. Yeah, the Packers are um, playing a, a really, really, really good team. Um, and um, they're playing the Atlanta Falcons, who I called the win last week. But they did play the Carolina Panthers. Hello. And, uh, you know, Falcons look great. Um, Jesse Bates had uh, two interceptions. They got him in from Cincinnati. And uh, he had two interceptions, which was awesome, you know. So, I mean, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, they, It looks like, uh, you know, uh, that the Packers did well. I mean, Jordan Love did good. He was a great manager of the game. I loved it. I loved how he moved, and he, and he, they won. They won, you know. They did. They won, you know. It's... Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones could be hurt. Yeah. I mean, he he came up. His, he said he just twinged his quadricep or something stupid like that. I follow that twinge like, or in his, in, his, uh, in his quad or his hamstring. Excuse me, hamstring. And um, you know, we, who knows? I don't think he'll be playing. And then you have Dylan... Going into the Falcons, Falcons Algier, um, the he bought, beat the rookie rushing record last year from Atlanta. Look awesome last last game. Plus Bijan Robinson, wow, what a what a team they have and rushing. All they need is a quarterback, right? Oh, that's just that's a hit on uh, um, Riddle. Um, that I'm sorry. Yeah, I just um, I don't. Hopefully, it gets better. I hope he gets better because they do have a good team. Uh, but I'm giving this one up to the Packers going into um, Atlanta and beating the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. Uh, I have uh, the next game. We have the Raiders going into the Buffalo Bills. Like I said before, uh, the Buffalo Bills, that off- offensive line, the reason why Josh Allen was the way he was, they just couldn't hold the offensive line, could not hold the defense. Uh, and gave him, give him time, give him pockets to throw in. It was just, it was all over the place. Insanely, just embarrassing for the Buffalo Bills organization. Embarrassing, guys. Got to get that together. Got to get your offensive line better for, and you got to figure out how to run the ball. You know, just got to. And I, I the Raiders defense-wise, they, spit, they stepped it up. They stepped it up. I mean, Max Crosby should be in the backfield all the time against these guys. And, uh, man, Jimmy G. Oof. Yeah, everyone puts Jimmy D in down. Nikki's Niners, uh, my cute little friend up in San Francisco, her San Francisco 49ers star hired. Of course, she's a Jimmy G lover. You know, she's all over him, that's for sure. And, um, man, I'm giving this one up to the Bills. I don't think they're going to lose two straight. They're going to beat the Raiders. This is going to be a tight game, guys. Trust me. Jimmy G is all for real. You know, he could upset these guys. So don't be so certain on betting, thinking that they're going to beat them by 8 to 10 points. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's going to be a very, very tight game. Very tight game. Tyler Bass, field goal at the end, is going to win it. Next game, we have the Chargers. Going into Tennessee, I don't know about that Charger defense. Uh, you know, they just couldn't stop the Cheetah. And now they have DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, come on. If you guys can't beat the Titans and stop the Titans' offense, you have problems. I, I'm just, I just, I have to have save some faith in the Chargers in their, I um, mean, I know that... Um, uh, Eckler hit, hurt his ankle. You know, he came up limping. Kelly came in and did an amazing job. Amazing job. He looked great. Uh, 
So, I mean, yeah, I just, I, I just don't understand that. That's for sure. Um, but I, I'm giving this one up to the Chargers. We have the Niners coming into Los Angeles SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. And uh, Purdy looked great. Now, the, line, the, the uh, Rams look great. Rams, 49ers coming into SoFi, playing the Los Angeles Rams. The Niners did look good. Uh, you know, they were really good. And then, you know, I'm just giving this one up to the Niners. Sorry, Los Angeles. Don't hate me. Uh, we have the Giants going out to uh, the uh, Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals, not that good of a team. Uh, really not too good. Two good, not good teams playing. Uh, hopefully the Giants bounce back. I think they'll have a big game. Saquon Barkley is going to have a huge game. Uh, and if you're a fantasy football fan, play. Play Daniel Jones this game. Mark my words. Play, play him. We um, already talked about the Jets and the Cowboys. I'm giving this one up to the, the Cowboys at home over the Jets, unfortunately. Um, wow. We have the Commanders going into the uh, to Denver Mile High Stadium, Mile High Stadium, excuse me, playing Sean Payton's Denver Broncos. Russell Wilson's going to figure something out in this game. It's going to be a defensive battle. Uh, you know, they're both are going to um, try to just pound it out. Uh, I, I'm giving this one up to the Denver Broncos, believe it or not, to beat the Washington Commanders. But it's going to be a tight game, guys. Tight game. We have uh, Sunday night football. We have Sunday night football. We have the Dolphins going into the New England Patriots. Uh, you know, like I said before, the New England Patriots, uh, they have held uh, uh, the uh, Tua and company to 188 yards passing, three touchdowns, two interceptions. That's been his average, to his average against New England. He has beat New England every time. But this time is, I guess it's going to be like my second upset special. I'm going to give this up at home. The New England Patriots to beat the Miami Dolphins at home. Yes, New England Patriots to beat the Miami Dolphins, guys, at home. Mark my word, that's going to be a great game. Great game. Monday night, we have two Monday night games. We have the Saints going into... The Carolina Panthers, I think the Saints, I mean, Derek Carr, he was mic'd up. He sounded so good, so good. He's so excited. He is very, very excited. He is a very good quarterback, guys, very good. They're going to just annihilate the Panthers. This is going to be another boring Monday night football game. It's going to be something like 40 to nothing, 40 to 3. It's, it's the Saints all over them. My next game, uh, the Browns are like, I think they're favored by two or three points, something like that. Going into uh, Pittsburgh's, the Steelers. I think Steelers are going to bounce back in this game. I just I just have that great feeling. Uh, their defense is going to pick up and their offense is going to get better. This is another upset that I'm calling. And that's going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Casey, my nephew Casey, love you, honey. And um, you're, I'm calling the Steelers. I know you hated me last week for me calling uh, the uh, the lock of the week for um, my lock was uh, the Browns um, beating um, uh, the excuse me the um, San Francisco 49ers beating the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, just don't hold that against me. I, I'm not I'm not a fan of any team, uh, but um, this game definitely Casey. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers will bounce back and beat the uh, the uh, Cleveland Browns in in Pittsburgh, guys. And just a reminder, guys, my lock this week, my lock this week is the Los Angeles Chargers. Yes, going into Tennessee and beating the Tennessee Titans. That is my lock of the week. So my upset of the week is the Baltimore Ravens. I have a couple of upsets, but that's my upset special. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens to beat the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. Believe it or not, that's that's a huge upset. And uh, the lock of the week, the Los Angeles Chargers against the yes, the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> the Los Angeles Chargers <laughs> against the Tennessee Titans. That is my. <laughs> my lock of the week. I'll be fine, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys next week. Kelvin Dean out.